What's it like to be on Japanese TV? I'm Chris. This is Yellow Productions. I do travel guides that are fun, informative, and entertaining. And I need to mute this audio so I don't hear an echo. <clears throat> and in this video, I'm going to share with you what my experiences have been like being on Japanese television. I've been on Japanese TV three times now. And why did I decide to do this video right now? Well, I've talked about my experiences before, but never in great length. The Olympics are going on right now in Japan, so I figured what better time to talk about Japanese TV than now. And also, I recently watched this video. That's not the picture I'm looking for. I watched a video from uh, Chris Brode on the Abroad in Japan channel titled um, Why I Avoid Japanese TV, where uh, Chris Brode talks about his three most awkward times on Japanese television, and he basically spends the whole episode uh, talking about why he doesn't like Japanese TV and why he didn't like his experience on it. Well, I will say, I've had a completely different experience being on Japanese TV, and so that's why I want to share with you today, and I think uh, making a Japanese television show is also a very interesting cultural look into the Japanese culture. All three experiences have been fantastic, and it's funny that I've been on Japanese TV more than I've been on American TV. I've been on American TV once on Newsmax as a guest host. So anybody, if any, if there's any American TV producers, let me know. Chris is always uh, open to be on different screens. So the first one that I want to walk you through, and so there's three. Um, the first one I want to walk you through is when OC Girl and I were in uh, Kyushu in Fukuoka, Japan. And this was an impromptu one where a news crew basically stopped us, spent the day with us. I'm going to tell you more about that in just a second, but I want to tell you about the other two, and then we'll come back to the one in Kyushu. The second uh, Japanese TV experience that we had um, was I was asked to uh, host a show about round one. It's a Japanese arcade uh, that's opened locations in America, and they were making a documentary on round one, and they wanted to show the Japanese viewers what a American version of round one looked like. So I was the host for that show. And then the third time uh, was actually when we were in Fukushima, just at the end of February 2019. Uh, a Fukushima news crew spent a day with us uh, and televised our um, experiences and efforts to promote tourism in Fukushima. So those are the three times we've been on Japanese TV. And so now I'm going to walk you through each one of those, show you some behind-the-scenes footage, show you what it looked like actually on television, uh, and talk about the general experience. So... The first one I mentioned, we were a couple years ago in Fukuoka in Kyushu. This is like the southernmost part of Japan, and we were going to this place called the Daizaifu Tenmongu Shrine. It's like the biggest shrine in the area. And we were walking down this main temple street, and I assume we must have been the only foreign-looking people on this street for a long time because there was this news crew standing there in the middle of the street and they saw us and immediately kind of like made a beeline for us and said, hey, where are you from? Where are you visiting? What are you doing here at the shrine? And then they said, hey, would you mind if we ask you a few questions? And then that turned into, um, hey, would you mind if we follow you around for a couple hours um, while you're here at the shrine? Because you're sort of going to be the stars for this episode that we're shooting. So we're like, okay, cool. Uh, and that was a really <clears throat> interesting experience having much bigger cameras follow us than smaller cameras. Our first experience on Japanese TV just as something where they stood in the street. And this is actually fairly typical in Japan to have people, uh, the news crews stand in the street to ask people questions and come come on the show. Uh, their laws in Japan are like much less strict in the U.S. around um, getting things signed or things like that. Basically, they say, hey, do you want to be on TV? And you say yes, and, and they're good to go. They don't need things signed in legal triplicate. So you see this quite often. Uh, I'm going to show you some behind-the-scenes footage that we took of this. This is while uh, I was in front of the camera. OC Girl was shooting what was happening. Uh, and so this is about two minutes of behind-the-scenes. Unfortunately, I don't have the actual segment that aired, but what show was it? It was a show teaching Japanese people English. Uh, and so English is like a, the Japanese have a very interesting thing with English in that English is cool to speak in Japan, but 
most Japanese people are not very good at speaking. And now we have <clears throat> most Japanese people are not very good at speaking English. Uh, and so a lot of TV shows often have segments to teach English. And they were teaching English on this show through the eyes of a foreigner to say, hey, as a foreigner that comes to Japan, how could the Japanese people talk to you and help you understand things? Uh, the Japanese people also really are into making uh, Japan welcome for visitors. By the way, if you saw a little blip there, a uh, winner, winner, I've got a slightly different setup here with things in different places, so I'm working through the kinks on this new live streaming setup I've got today. Um, and so uh, the video that I'm going to show you here, you'll see the crew. Uh, there was a cameraman, an audio person, two producers, and a show host that I was talking to. Uh, and uh, you're first going to see the street that we started on. Then you're going to see this line of people that are lined up to touch this head of the bull. And then they said, OK, we'd like you to go up to uh, somebody in that line and essentially ask them why they're there and have a conversation with them and, and then talk about it. So uh, that's what we're going to take a look at right here. So this is that main Temple Street that I talked about. This is the street where the news crew was standing. You see those uh, kind of Tory arch gates that walks up to the temple. This is that line, this long line of people waiting for the bull. No English signage, so real as a visitor, no real idea why people are doing this. Excuse me, uh, is this for good luck? <laughs> One. <laughs> what did you ask her, by the way, when you first started to ask her a question? Uh, I asked her uh, if rubbing this, if this was for good luck. Ah, I I, I probably should have started by asking if she spoke English, <laughs> which which I probably would normally, <laughs> except you told me just to go talk to her. <laughs> so. Thank you. Yeah, sure. So what is the actual meaning of it? That's so that's the reason. Okay. <laughs> Japanese people tend to be by the way, I showed you that really long clip that you probably couldn't hear her or maybe understand what she was saying uh, about her explaining what went on. That's a big experience shooting Japanese TV because typically the people that produce the shows, their English isn't great, so you have a translator, somebody translate things. So there's absolutely a lot of time spent um, kind of trying to understand things, talking to one thing, waiting for people to talk about something else, translating, going back and forth. Uh, and then the show host here now is going to explain and ask me a question, but a little bit uh, their motivation about why uh, why they were doing this. More shy and reserved and not want to use because they only have tango tango. They only have words. They don't right. have gra gra grammatical structure or full sentences or full conversation ability. Right. What would your advice be to Japanese people who see a foreigner who looks like they need help or could use some explanation but is, is too shy to approach? Um... I think that sometimes there's also other people that speak English around, yeah. uh, and I've found it helpful when Japanese maybe, if if they know I'm trying to ask a question, that maybe they could ask in Japanese to others, like, mm -hmm. does anybody speak English that could help this person? Uh, <laughs> Okay. 
やお参りしてみての感想はどう,どういう感じですかあのまあ、忙しくしてまして、人がたくさん来てて、いやすごいことがいっぱい。Yeah, so I saw Ann in the chat say, Awkward, there are indeed a lot of awkward moments. And Sol asked, Did they not understand what was asked, or were they just embarrassed? Probably a little bit of both, but those things come together. It is likely they understood what was asked, but they didn't actually know how to answer. Because Japanese spend a lot of time listening to English and hearing English,、um, but not speaking English. And yes, of course, when I come up and then there's a camera and a boom microphone and two people behind, I could see anybody absolutely. Absolutely being、uh, embarrassed about that.、Uh, Wu Tai says, I told you you were a celebrity, you already knew that.、Um, and、uh, Alex was wondering why we had the winner winner chicken dinner. Well,、uh, that was it because of this new setup. And Ryan said, What about、uh, on American TV? Yes, on Newsmax TV once.、Uh, Okay, so that experience, impromptu one.、Uh, they then spent two hours, I say, following us around. And it's really hard to be incognito when like, a news crew is kind of. Stalking you with a boom microphone every time. But they were super nice.、Uh, the news crew, even like some segments, they were like, hey, would you like us to shoot it on our cell phone so you can get you making the video?、Um, anyway, just a, just a very、uh, pleasant, pleasant experience. Uh, okay, so I want to go on to the second experience now. This was less of an impromptu experience being on Japanese TV, but this was、uh, an experience where I was requested to host a show、uh, in the Kansai region, which is around Osaka, Japan, on a morning variety show. Japan has a lot of morning variety television, kind of like Good Morning America or The View, where people sit around and talk about things with stories that they've had people.、Um, Shoot and produce. And so for this morning variety show, they were doing a segment on this Japanese arcade chain called Round One. It's Japan's biggest kind of like bowling and arcade chain. They have some very aggressive plans to expand in the US. And they wanted somebody to show the Japanese viewers around what an American round one looks like. How did they find me? Well, they went on YouTube and searched for people who did videos on round one in the US. I have a video where I show people around. The round one Japanese arcade in Santa Ana. They must have liked、uh, seeing me playing Cho Chubadai Gaishi, which is the super T table flip game where literally、um, you're this,、uh, you know. Businessman, family man who gets angry, and you flip this tea table over,、uh, and how much damage you do to the room, or things like that, is how many points you get. It's a great game, only in Japan for sure.、Uh, and so, with this one,、uh, the director flew out from Japan.、Uh, there were two other people who were here in the Los Angeles region a、uh, camera guy and a producer that made this. o s i g u r o was not there for this one,、uh, it was just me and this group, so I don't have as much behind the scenes. Footage, but I do have what they aired in Kansai, and so I want to share this with you. This is about、uh, four minutes long. The total segment, the total show, was actually 20 minutes long and included things like the CEO from round one talking. My scenes are four minutes, so that's what I've cut down right here for you, <clears throat> and I'll come back to share some insights、uh, as we go through this. Now,、uh, I want to point out that people often ask me how long it takes to shoot my videos. I just want to say that it, this, My on screen time was about four and a half minutes.、Uh, we met at 2 p.m. and we were shooting until 10 p.m. So we were shooting for about eight hours, ended up shooting a lot of stuff that obviously didn't make it in, went on the floor.、Um, but similar behind the scenes experience. And you're going to see right at the beginning as I, as I jump in to the camera. Uh, that was from my channel trailer, if you've seen it, where I jump in. They're like, Chris, we've seen your channel trailer, and we want you to do the same thing to welcome the Japanese viewers. Here we go. はい日本の皆さん僕はクリスラウンドワンが大好きなんだ今日はアメリカ版ラウンドワンを案内するよ彼は月に2回はラウンドワンで遊ぶアメリカきってのラウンドワンヘビーユーザークリス・レイニーその正体は世界の観光地を自ら Also, by the way, if you see the people in the corner of the screen up here, those are basically the people that are on the variety show, like the hosts of Good Morning America or The View. And a little different in Japanese TV, they show them watching the clips and them reacting to it. So you can see how, how funny I was or how entertaining I was、uh, based on their reactions up here. And right now they're doing my channel trailer, obviously in Japanese. Let's go back to it.
歩き尽くす大人気の旅系ユーチューバーラウンド1はベストアーケードスポットだ And now they're showing the original video that I made about the Santa Ana round one. They're saying, hey, how did we find this guy? Well, this guy's already made a whole bunch of videos showing people around one. Now we're gonna,、uh, now he's gonna do it for you. Nado to round one no m i r i a k u m sekai ni ha shin chu. Wow, hai ta shun kan s u g o i hikari da. Oto mo s u g o i ne. So that scene walking into the arcade, I think we shot that scene about 10 different times. And、uh, if you've seen the movie Lost in Translation, where Bill Murray is drinking his son, Tori, almost every time I went in, they were like, We're more. We want you to give us more energy. We want you to be really excited. And it's also funny to think about being really excited. And then my voice is dubbed into Japanese. And so the Japanese guy is really excited as well.、Um, But you can imagine like going through a door that opens and closes and waiting for it to close and doing it when nobody's coming in because they didn't close round one for us to do this. We just went while it was in business and running.、Uh, so that took us just like probably 30 minutes almost to get like the opening scene. I guess it's, you know, those two scenes are probably the most important. The first thing is the first thing is the first thing is the first thing is the f i r And the Japanese love maps. So before I can show you around round one, then you need to see a map of where all the different things are. So that map showed where the bowling alley is, where the karaoke is, where the game set is. And now I'm going to show you around the bowling alley. And before we shot this, they asked me, they said, Chris, what do you find most interesting about the bowling alley at round one compared to American bowling alleys? And I'm like, well, number one, that is. It's really clean.、Uh, and so I'm showing off how clean it is. But then I'm like, number two, how the. Tables for like your food and drinks in between the lanes have a line down them so you know exactly what side is yours and what side is someone else's. It's like super Japanese. American bowling alley would just be a table and you know, you'd sort of have an argument about this just stuff and whose side is which side. But it's very clear on these tables whose side is which. And then when I point that out, I want you to notice the、uh, studio's reaction. ラウンド1といえばボーリングだよねチェックしてみるボーリングゾーンでクリスが教えてくれたのはこのボール見てよ美しく光り輝いてるだろ全然汚れてない確かに綺麗だが大げさに言うほどじゃこっちがボーリングレーンここの注目はソファーだよとても気持ちいいんだテーブルもすごいぞ真ん中に仕切りがある隣のお客さんと分けられているんだいこんな気遣いはなかなかないよ<笑>普段のアメリカのボーリングどうなってるんですか<笑>そっちが見たいよな逆に続いてはアメリカのカラオケゾーン続いてはクレーンゲームゾーン Yeah, so you could see right there、uh, that they really loved that little line. That's so Japanese! You're right.、Uh, and now you notice we skipped over the karaoke zone.、Uh, they had me sing、uh, some Taylor Swift karaoke in the. Uh, zone, and I also sang some Weird Al karaoke. Apparently, they must have cut that because I was so bad.、Uh, this is the one thing I do have the behind the scenes of uh, because uh, they were like, Chris, do you want us to film you singing the Weird Al karaoke? So here's what that Weird Al karaoke looks like, and then I'll, I'll bring us back to the real video. As I walk through the valley where I harvest my grain, I take a look at my wife in green l i n e She's very clean, but that's just perfect for an Amish like me. You know, I shun fancy things like electricity. At 4 30 in the morning, I'm milking cows. Jebediah feeds the chicken and Jacob plows. Fool. Yeah, I could do that. I, this, one of the few songs I really know by heart is Weird Al's Amish Paradise.、Um, but let's go ahead. And by the way, so Japanese karaoke, if you've never done Japanese karaoke, different than American karaoke. American karaoke is usually like one person singing in front of a bar. At round one, they have the private karaoke rooms. And so you rent the room by the hour. And you kind of go in there with your friends. You can order drinks. There's sofas. Things Like that, and so that way you don't have to embarrass yourself in front of too many people. In this case, I only embarrassed myself in front of the you know, camera crew, the director, and, and the internet here now on YouTube, so it's all good. All right, back to the,、uh, back to the actual TV show. Nippon to Onejik, some other one of the Korean game is Zurari to Narabu. Shka mo yoku miru to Nippon no character bakari. Tuzaitewa game zone. 実はここには
日本のラウンドワンにはない画期的なシステムがある一体それは僕が一番好きなゲームをやろうダンスダンスレボリューションだ Of course, they asked me what my favorite game in the arcade is, and as you all know, it's Dance Dance Revolution. So they're like, Chris, you need to show us some of your moves on Dance Dance Revolution. So let's get back to that. というと、軽やかなステップを見せ、どんどん得点していくクリス。すごい。難しい。さすがはアメリカきってのラウンドワンヘビーユーザークリス。なんとこの店のニューレコードを達成<笑>すごい。By the way, I love the Japanese about how they introduce me、uh, round one heavy user, right? That's that English being cool, so you can actually hear that in there. So after we shot that scene, then the arcade manager came over because they saw the big camera crew around this, and he was like, hey, if you need anybody to play Dance Dance Revolution, you know, he's like, I'm pretty good. So it's like, okay, why don't we play together? And I was really impressed at this guy playing Dance Dance Revolution wearing a suit. So, 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 そして突然ハイレベルな戦いが始まった<笑>どうやらクリスのニューレコードに刺激されたようそういうタイプに見えへん<笑><笑>人ともマーベラス連発実はこの男性この店舗のアルバイトリーダーへえー、さんもやんの仕事中に遊んでていいの他にも様々なゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでいるので、そのようなゲームを楽しんでい
uh, super appreciative, uh, and it was really amazing. Uh, Kathy says, uh, I never played Dance Dance Revolution. Well, now you should, Kathy, or we all challenge you to a dance-off. And Monster Jam says, Chris had a blast day with the Japanese TV crew. I sure did. And let me tell you, because uh, I got there at 2 and at 10, no meal breaks during that time. Uh, so I got my dinner at, like, in and out Burger at about 10.30 after we uh, did the shoot. But it was a lot of fun. Uh, and uh, I didn't know round one is in the U.S. too. It sure is. Um, I think there's about 10 locations in the U.S. currently. And then as part of this documentary, the CEO of round one said they have plans to open 100 locations in the U.S. because they're doing so well. This location was in Temecula, California. My favorite location is the one in Santa Ana, California. Um, and Jade asks if I can speak fluent Japanese and if I'm a fan of the Olympics. I cannot speak fluent Japanese. My Japanese is not great at all. Uh, and I am a fan of the Olympics, though I haven't really been watching as much of it as I probably should. Uh, Notice said, how long did that take? Uh, it took us eight hours to shoot uh, those uh, four or five minutes of video, or the four or five minutes that ended up being there. There were lots of scenes, as I said, that then just ended up being cut. There were scenes we were at the bar where I was ordering some of the wine, drinking the wine, drinking the beer. Uh, I'm experiencing a lot of different things, playing some of the gun games and different games. So, um, you know, there's just a lot of stuff that they go into it to then ultimately make the, the, final, uh, the final cut. All right. So now I want to go on to the third and final uh, experience we had being on Japanese TV. This is the most recent. This was from our trip to Fukushima, Japan. And this one had a much larger crew. Uh, this one was aired on um, the Fukushima News, Fukushima TV U. Uh, here it was a cameraman, an audio guy, um, two producers, the show host, a translator, and a director. So a large group of people that were with us. And this was, why were there so many people? This was a really exciting thing for Fukushima. And I feel a little sad for them with the whole Olympics and the situation in Japan because Fukushima Prefecture was planning this grand tourism reopening in conjunction with the 2020 Tokyo Olympics. And so they were really excited to see a YouTuber in Fukushima uh, saying, hey, this person's going to bring us, uh, you know, people in connection with the Olympics. And actually, I've, I shot, in addition to Fukushima, I shot videos in Tokyo, 19 things to know before you go to Tokyo, which I planned to release at the 2020 Olympics, because everybody's going to be going, right? There's, so you need videos on Tokyo, and then the Olympics got moved, and now there's no visitors going to Japan. So I feel very bad for Fukushima, but at the time, there was a lot of excitement about it and producing this, um, because many people, you know, just, they, they still associate Fukushima with the nuclear disaster. And Fukushima, it's a huge place. And so for people saying the whole place is irradiated, or I, I don't want to go, is saying like, oh, well, you know, there was a nuclear meltdown in San Diego, and so I'm not going to go to San Francisco anymore. I mean, it's a big place, and where the power plant was is like a long way away from actually where the touristy areas are. So we spent the day with this production crew uh, that they ultimately aired on uh, their um, news uh, a couple of different nights, and, and some of the um, people that we were with actually sent us sent us a video of the segment on television, but I actually have the file that they aired on TV. Um, and so I'm going to show you about a minute and a half of the uh, on-screen one, and then I'm going to show you some of the behind-the-scenes things. So this is what they aired in Japan in February of 2019 for our visit. Enusta. 今日の特集はこちらのアメリカ人ユーチューバーが主役です。政府はオリンピックまでに2000万人の外国人観光客を呼び込む目標を掲げています。県の中、県内でも様々なチャレンジをしていて、ユーチューバーの正体もその一つです
By the way, that scene that you saw right there with that snowy uh, in the background, you're going to see that in uh, just a moment. Uh, there was another one where the news crew offered to show us to do a little behind the scenes uh, where they held the camera to see what that looks like so you could see what that looks like from a little bit of a different angle when I show you the behind the scenes. Uh, but now I want to show you a really another neat area that they were shooting this at. And they this day, they picked the locations that we went to and they took us to some really amazing locations. This next location is on top of a frozen lake that we had to snowshoe on. And the news crew had to snowshoe to um, to get there, so let's take a look at what that looked like. <音楽><音楽><音楽><音楽> Yeah, so that was that scene right there with all the snow behind it. Remember, that's a that's a lake. That's actually like a frozen lake that we were standing on. Now, uh, how did this all kind of like um, happen on the day of? So we met the news crew in like this random parking lot that we actually didn't know where we were going. We, I mean, we know we were meeting in this parking lot, but we didn't know what we were going to see there. They kept telling us, you're going to see some splashing ice. I'm like, what is splashing ice? Uh, and they're like, it's cool. You're going to see it, but we're going to, we're going to record you walking down here. Um, but this is another one obviously made for TV. They're like, Hey, we want you to just, you know, walk down this, uh, path, act natural. It's really cold by the way. It's snowing. It's really cold. I'm a California boy, so I'm not used to snow. Uh, the snow in Fukushima is known as powder snow. It's very, um, dry and light and fluffy so you'll see me blowing the snow um, to kind of right that's it might be something I might do as I walk to do that uh, but obviously it's one of those to be like how do you act natural when there's like six people walking ahead of you and do with that so I'll show you some scenes about what they looked like what it looked like doing that you'll see a scene uh, where we did that interview scene and then there's also just some scenes of me talking in there that I use for our YouTube video that had them in there uh, then you'll see a scene where we are uh, eating at this restaurant that has a foot bath in front of it, and they recorded a segment in front of the foot bath, and then when we were done with the whole day, they gave us um, gifts, and so you'll see the gifts the news crew gave us that we were opening at the end, and obviously I'll, I'll talk to you as we go through this. This is video number five. Here we go. So after Ichijuku, we came to some place even colder. We came to some place, the fourth largest lake in Japan, that has splashing ice. And this splashing ice is so amazing that a TV crew from Japan, from the Fukushima region, came to videotape me looking at this ice. And uh, hey, if you're watching this in Japan, well then you can see this on the local news. And these guys are really pros, let me tell you. And I'm impressed with this guy. He's holding that big camera, walking backwards and doesn't slip at all. Walks about twice as fast as I do, so I got something to learn from these guys. It's almost like we're shooting, you know? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I can, I can shoot you. We've come up to a higher elevation at the Bondi Lakeside Guest House and we're doing snowshoeing. So we've got the whole crew <laughs> shoeing up to go some shoeing. Take a look at my shoes down here. You know, I've always said I have big feet, but now my feet are even bigger. And by the way, apparently my feet are so big that those boots I'm wearing, the instructor here had to go to multiple ski resorts in the area to find my size. Apparently this size, not so useful in Japan. So this is the path they had us walking down where they said like, hey, we're just going to shoot you, just go ahead and act natural, look around, do what you would normally do. Um, and this is where I'm really impressed about that guy walking backwards with that big camera. Okay, that was, that was an epic fail. Let's, we, should, we should try that again. So this was the segment that they said, hey, let's take your cell phone out. Let's take a look yeah. at this. So this is the one where you I saw us standing in this really snowy field, uh, kind of the behind the scenes of that camera, the producer. Um, and then this, they were recording uh, the host of this bed and breakfast. Um, again, this neat interview thing where you see that boom microphone, the tripod, they're holding it, they're protecting it from the snow. Uh, and then... Or, like, what's, what's the order of me doing this? 
Okay, so now we are at the, the dinner restaurant, and right, there's a lot of time about you see what I do, but then I'm like, they say, hey, we want you to walk and do this, and some time spent like, like what is what is it that you actually want me to do? And because it's like that lost in translation about seven people going like, well, I want him to do this, and I want him to do this, and I want him to do this, and I want him to do this. It would take quite a bit of time to figure out exactly what we were shooting. Afterwards. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. And so if we're we're um, any comment about onsen being a Japanese culture? Uh, yeah. The first time I came to Japan, and my wife said, "Hey, we should go to an onsen," and I'm like, "What's an onsen?" And she's like, yeah, it's this place where you go in a hot spring and like, you kind of have to take your clothes off. So I have to point out that what I'm sitting in right now, this is actually onsen water. This is uh, hot water from a you know volcanic fissure uh, in front of this restaurant that you can just go and get a foot bath in. And this region is super popular. And so they said, Chris, we would like you to sit in this water in this foot bath and talk to us about Japanese hot water bathing culture. Often you have to be in front of other people and... The first time I thought about that, I'm like, that's really strange. I'm not sure that I want to go. Why don't you just go? I'm just going to stay in the room. And, uh, and I think maybe the first Onsen Hotel we went to, maybe I did. Maybe I just stayed in the room. Or the first morning or something like that. And uh, eventually my wife convinced me and said, no, 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 you have to go. And... She was like, well, how, you know, how long... By the way, if you're wondering why I'm talking so slow, it's because the lady in the blue vest, she's translating as I'm talking. So I'm pausing every once in a while to give her a chance to catch up and talk. I don't ordinarily talk that slow. As you know, I have a tendency to actually talk pretty fast. We're going to be there because we're going to set up a time to meet. And um, I said, well, I'll probably be back in 15 minutes. And she goes, well, you know, maybe, maybe just take an hour if you need to. And, and I tell you what, I was in the hot spring for like nearly an hour. It was an outdoor hot spring and I just enjoyed it so much. And so every time we come to Japan, we always make sure we have at least one night in an onsen hotel. But until the... So, so about the food fast, Yeah. Yeah, yeah, right. So, until this trip, we've never we've never really used the public foot baths, um, and we probably never used the public foot baths before because we've never had a towel with us. But on this trip, I've done three foot baths now, and I really like the foot baths. And so I'm going to make sure as I travel around Onsen towns in Japan in the future, we're going to have a towel with us. Thank you. <laughs> so the TV crew gave us a small token of their appreciation for being on the show. And so let's open it up and see what it is. Oh, it's couple's chopsticks with some matching flowers, matching lacquerware. Thank you very much. Thank you. Maybe you can mention this. Yeah. And, uh, and I'll say, I got another thing I'm not going to open. Mm -hmm. This way. This way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a fly me to the boon cake. All right. Otherwise, I should open the box then. All right. Okay. So we got a second box. This one, by the way, this is never before seen aired footage. It was something that I shot and never made it into my vlog. So we got about 45 more seconds of me opening that box. What is in that box? Chopsticks. What else are they going to give? By the way, the whole gift giving tradition, super big in Japan. So it was super sweet that they gave us these gifts at the end of the day as a lousy American. I had no gifts to give them um, other than some yellow productions cards, which then you'll see after we open this gift that we signed something and put it on the wall in there as an American YouTuber who went to this gyoza restaurant. This one's heavy. This one's heavy. 
There probably would be a perfect way to open this, but I've never been good at opening things the perfect way. Ooh, it's a fancy box. Fly me to the moon. And if you're wondering what's inside the box, well, it's a fly me to the moon cake where every slice of cake is a different design on the inside. That's amazing. I'm looking forward to seeing that. By the way, and so if you go to Gyoza Terui in the Fukushima Prefecture, look for my signature there on the wall. All right, so that was the final uh, Fukushima episode. Another amazing experience. And, you know, when you go into restaurants, or you go into businesses, and you come with a news crew, it's amazing how much more excited they are to show you things and do things with you, right? The ask of like, hey, can I go in the kitchen and shoot you guys making these pot stickers? It's a gyoza pot stick restaurant. They're like, absolutely, no problem. Because, you know, it's not just a little YouTuber. It's the whole news crew there and doing the snowshoeing and all that stuff. They're things that we would never be like, hey, we should get some snowshoes and shoot on that frozen lake. I mean, maybe we should. Maybe we should think a little bigger. Uh, but it was neat to, neat to have them think big for us. Uh, Lab said about uh, shooting in that bath. You know what they say about guys with big feet? They wear big socks for sure. Uh, and then Ben said in that video uh, where they were showing uh, the Fukushima uh, on the Fukushima news and they kind of showed some samples of places uh, that we've been. They indeed uh, show, showed the video that Ben and I did in Melbourne, which was pretty fun. Melbourne, Melbourne. I got to work on that. Fellow explorers, it is now Q&A time. If you've got a question, I've got an answer. All right, so that's what it is like to be on Japanese television. It is now Q&A time. By the way, what am I drinking today? Today, I am drinking an Uji green milk tea. Uji matcha green tea, Japanese green tea right here for the video about what it's like to be on Japanese TV. So any questions that you asked that I didn't answer, go ahead and put them in the chat right now. Um, and uh, as, a, as a side note, I said I'm still working on my um, new setup here. I've got, uh, like I tried to put all my live streaming stuff on like one table now. So I've got a little different mount and a couple monitors and things in different places. And so I just have to get used to my new ergonomic uh, setup. Uh, Kathy said I got Melbourne right. Thank you, Kathy. I appreciate it. Uh, Monster Jam said Chris could be a popular YouTuber in Japan. Uh, could be. Apparently, I'm more popular in Japan, at least with Japanese TV, than I am with American TV, but that's all good. I've probably got a lot of Americans that just watch me on YouTube. Uh, Monster Jam says, how many minutes is it from your local Japanese uh, store? You mean like to drive? Um, I think the closest one is is less than 10 minutes away. Driving, we have a lot of actual uh, Japanese supermarkets around here. Uh, there's a couple of Mitsuas nearby. Uh, there's a Tokyo Central, which is like a Don Quixote. It's their name in the US. Um, so probably within a 15 minute drive, we have um, five uh, Japanese supermarkets. There's a lot of them here in Orange County, California. Uh, Alex asked, when did I find out I'm the greatest of all time of YouTubers? That's very kind of you, Alex. Alex, when did you find out that you are the greatest of all time of the fans? Thank you very much. Uh, Noda asks, what sparked your interest in Japanese culture? Um, so the first trip I took to Japan uh, was with my wife, girlfriend at the time, OC Girl, in 2004. We took a trip to Japan. Uh, and, you know, I've always, like, I've always gone to, like, Comic-Con. I've always kind of liked anime and manga. But I wasn't, like, a, like anime or manga nerd. I just, I liked the animation, things like that. Uh, and then when I went to Japan on that trip, Cherry Blossom time, I just, I, I fell in love with it. I fell in love with the place. I fell in love with the people. I fell in love with the hospitality. Uh, and um, OC Girl, she did uh, foreign exchange school in Japan. Um, she grew up in Taiwan, which is right nearby Japan. Taiwan has a big Japanese influence, uh, and so that uh, probably uh, probably is where our interest in Japan goes to. And then we go uh, every 
we like to go every two years, uh, but uh, you know, probably next one will be whenever uh, the pandemic's over and this open up. Uh, Lab asks if I've been to the round one in Little Tokyo, Los Angeles. I've not been to the one in Little Tokyo. Uh, is there one in Little Tokyo? When did the one in Little Tokyo open? Uh, I'm not sure. Let's see. Yeah, when I Google map around one little Tokyo, I don't see one. So, um, but I've I've been to what I think is all of the round ones in like the Los Angeles area, which is the one in Temecula, the one in Santa Ana, the one in Lakewood, which is Long Beach, the one in the city of uh, Industry, which is actually where they shot some scenes from Back to the Future in the mall where this one is. Um, so I think I've been. I've also been to the round one in San Jose. As you can tell, I'm a big fan of arcades, particularly Japanese arcades. Uh, Monster Jam's got to go by Kathy says, hopefully we get out of lockdown in Melbourne tonight. I hope so for you, Kathy. Um, Erica says, do you think you will continue to go to Onsen Hotels now? Do you have a little one? Uh, I think so. I think we will. You know, uh, Onsen Hotels have a lot of, like, programs for kids to play, too. We can also bring her into the Onsen. Uh, and also... You know, on our last trip to Kyushu, we did like some um, hotels that had like private onsen baths in the room, and and so that's a, another way to do it as well. But we love onsen hotels, so yes, I think we will keep going. So I'll ask if I am watching the Olympics. I'm reading some of the news and things like that of the Olympics, but I uh, honestly I've not been glued to the television. I've been reading about just how hot it is there. Um, Points traveler asks, "What's my favorite major city in Japan and why?" I like Tokyo. I like it's just it's the biggest. It's the hive of energy. There's everything that goes on there. There's anything that anybody could ever want and like in Tokyo. It's home to Tokyo Disney. It's home to the robot restaurant. Um, so that's my favorite. Uh, it's the biggest city, so it's my favorite big city. Uh, if you had to ask me for maybe one of my favorite smaller cities, uh, I really like Nara. I like all of the deer in Nara. I'm sure many of you who've been on here a lot have heard, uh, you know, I, I, one of my favorite videos is the deer in Nara, Japan. If you've not seen my video on feeding the deer in Nara, Japan, if you're new to this channel, go check it out after you watch this one. That is one of my favorites, feeding the 100 wild deer. Kathy says my kids are in anime, so they want to go to Japan. I can't wait to get there one day. I'm sure you will enjoy it, Kathy. Alex asks if you've ever tried the Haichu candy. I know they're a popular Asian candy, and they're so good. I have tried Haichu. They're good. They make them with real fruit juice. I'm not a huge um, candy person, so I, I don't eat them all that much. I, I, clearly, you know I'm a big tea person, so I drink a lot of tea. A Geoman says, I live 10 minutes away from the Round 1 in the City Industry. Very cool, Geoman. What's your favorite game there at the City of Industry Round 1? Erica says, my husband and I actually found this vlog during the pandemic. We're hoping to go when travel restrictions lift. Your videos are great. Well, that's great, Erica. Um, I'll have plenty more Japan videos coming out because I said I shot a whole bunch uh, when we were there in February of 2019 that I have yet to release. I just released the Tokyo Scams video because I figure what better time. During the Olympics, I'll try to get a few more Japan videos out that have been sitting in the archive bin. Um, Right. So uh, Lab says, what is your favorite Japanese Kit Kat flavor? I think I like the matcha Kit Kats, which are kind of like the green tea flavored Kit Kats. You can get them in Japan. You can also get them in a lot of the Japanese stores uh, in the U.S. I know many people, if you haven't been to Japan, you won't know, but Japan has a whole ton of unique Kit Kat flavors. They have unique flavors to anything. You go like get Doritos or this and that. They like their unique and also limited edition flavors. Uh, the Japanese are very big on seasonal things, so you get this during cherry blossom season, you get this during fall season, um, helps helps drive sales. Uh, Points Traveler asked if I ever watched the Abroad uh, in Japan channel on YouTube. I have watched the Abroad in Japan channel on YouTube, and it was actually uh, his video about why... I don't like Japanese television or why I, dis why I avoid Japanese television where he basically said he hated his experience on Japanese TV. Uh, that was one of the reasons that I wanted to do this video because um, he didn't like the fact that he felt uh, the news crews were like putting words in his mouth to be like, say this, be more excited, tell them it's exciting and it's very good. You know, obviously, I mean, on TV, people just like exciting. Be excited, you know. I was—I don't like to lie, but I'm—I'm I'm okay with people going like, "Chris, you gotta like level it up a notch." Um, and Geo Man uh, goes to round one for the bowling. Very cool, Geo Man. Uh, Alex says they have round one in Seattle. Uh, one of the malls south of downtown is fun. What do you like, uh, Alex? Have you done bowling, or what do you like there? Maybe the karaoke. 
Kathy said, I had some matcha cake the other day. It was very nice. That's great to hear. I was surprised when I went to Australia um, just how much Asian influence there is in Australia, Japanese influence, but in particular Malaysian influence. Um, I really like uh, laksa, curry laksa, which OC Girl and I discovered in Singapore. Uh, and then we found out that in particular Melbourne has a whole ton of laksa restaurants, including one that we really loved called, uh, I think it's like Laksa King or something like that, that it just was like a whole restaurant that only specialized in laksa. That was pretty neat. Uh, Geoman asked if I like the sushi from Sprouts. I thought it was just okay. Uh, for those who don't know, Sprouts is a supermarket chain here, um, at least in Southern California. might be more, uh, I'd call it like a, like a poor man's Whole Foods. It's probably been around before Whole Foods, but it's a farmer's market type natural supermarket with a lot of um, fruits and vegetables. Uh, I I don't like sushi from any supermarket. I'm kind of a sushi snob. I didn't used to like sushi. Actually, I was somebody who hated sushi before going to Japan and having really good sushi, and then I found out what good sushi tastes like, and so now I really like sushi because I know what good sushi is. So I, uh, I don't know about the sushi at Sprouts because I would never buy the sushi from a supermarket because I've never found it to be good. Then let's say never, ne I have had sushi from supermarkets before. And every time I've had it, I've just found it's not very good. Why? Because the rice is um, hard and cold. And good sushi, the rice isn't cold. Good sushi, the rice is actually um, like a little warmer than room temperature, um, which that's like you have to eat it right away because the cold fish on the kind of the little warmer than room temperature rice um, just kind of makes for an interesting flavor dynamic uh, between it. Um, Points Traveler says, the only sushi type thing that I'll buy at the supermarket is poke. For sure, that is the only supermarket type thing that I'll buy that's a sushi-like thing. Poke, in particular, from Foodland. I also like the poke from Costco. Costco does a pretty good uh, poke. Uh, and Kathy points out that it's very quiet in the chat today. It is very quiet in the chat today. Probably showing you all these videos and having less of just me talking must have, must have put you all to sleep. I don't know. But Kathy says, if you are still awake, please push the thumbs up button if you're enjoying this video. If you do, it really helps me out because it lets uh, YouTube know you enjoy this video to share with other people. And every like goes to another piece of bamboo to feed the very hungry Yellow Productions crew in the background. So make sure they get dinner tonight. Give this video a thumbs up. There's 49 likes right now. I'm going to be watching that to see that going up. Um, Ben uh, asks, Chris, what do you think of Kyoto? That's my favorite city. I like Kyoto. Um, I almost like Kanazawa better. I don't know, Ben, have you been to Kanazawa? We went to Kanazawa um, a couple of years ago. It's on the, um, what, kind of like north, north, west, uh, on the other side of Tokyo, across the mountain ridge from Nagano, they call Kanazawa Little Kyoto because it has a lot of like the classic things Kyoto does, but it isn't like overrun with tourists the same way Kyoto is. Don't get me wrong, I love uh, all of the temples and things like that in Kyoto. Um, it just it is a tourist mob scene, and so I loved Kanazawa a little better because it wasn't just quite as overrun with uh, tourists. Um, Lab says. Uh, have you ever been to Kura Revolving Sushi Restaurant? I have. Uh, what's really neat about the Kura Revolving Sushi Restaurant uh, is they've got like the sushi trains and the screens that you can order the sushi. I don't consider it high-quality sushi, though. It's pretty um, cheap sushi. Uh, not great quality, but it's not super expensive. So uh, it's great with a bunch of people. It's a fun place to go. I often find the waits to be ridiculous. Like we've been there and waited like an hour, hour and a half for a table. Pretty crazy. I don't think it's worth waiting that long. Um, you know, I like to go to the real traditional Japanese style, like omokase type places or get a chirashi bowl. Uh, but I think uh, Kura is unique just having that Japanese ordering system and the trains that come up and uh, bring it to you. Um, Alex says, we haven't had a lot of comments, but we haven't had much trolling lately either. That's good. Uh, so, great. And uh, some of the people, uh, like Erica, says, I am chatting. I'm pretty engaged. You are, Erica. I appreciate it. Uh, Grant says, what's a good price for flights to Japan? When's the best time to visit? Uh, I guess it depends where you're flying from, but good. Uh, from We've gotten round-trip tickets from Los Angeles to Tokyo for like $400. Uh, I would say $600 or less, I consider to be a good fare to Tokyo. 
under a thousand bucks is reasonable. If it's more than a thousand bucks, then I, I try to pick a different time or this and that. Uh, I think the best time to visit Tokyo is either in uh, March, April, May, or um, September, October, November. In the summer, it's oppressively hot. Um, if you go in spring, you see the cherry blossoms. If you go in the fall, you see um, the fall leaves changing color. Obviously, not a lot of leaves changing color in Tokyo, but if you kind of like take some day trips around, uh, you'll see those things. And Kathy says trolls only come out when Chris talks about Las Vegas. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, the, the trolls. The trolls will probably come out on uh, Thursday. Thursday. It won't be a live stream, but Thursday I'm going to put out a video about how to save money on Las Vegas hotels, and then. Over the weekend, as August ticks around, I'm going to put out a video on an August reopening update for Las Vegas. Uh, ben says, we haven't been to Kanazawa. Well, I'd like to go. I uh, suggest you go just a short, maybe like three-hour bullet train ride from Tokyo, so it's worth it. Jake asks, if we've ever been to South Korea, Seoul is like a discount Tokyo. Seoul is kind of like Tokyo, but with a lot more kimchi. Uh, we've been to South Korea a couple times. We really enjoyed it. I have a whole series on South Korea. We actually went with a, a YouTuber trip that the um, South Korean tourism department sponsored. Uh, so that was a whole lot of fun. Uh, Geoman says, any Japanese food recommendations in Oahu? Uh, Tonkatsu Ginza Byron in Waikiki. I just did a review on it like three weeks ago. Check it out. I love the katsu from there. It's busy. Make your reservations in advance. There's another katsu place that a lot of people recommended uh, that I haven't been to called like uh, Tamafuji, like Katsu Tamafuji. You can see it in the comments on that video. So those would be my recommendations. Uh, Danielle asks, have we ever been to Universal Studios in Osaka? We've not. We have a Universal Studios in Hollywood, just an hour drive from our house, so we've not been to the one uh, in Japan. Kathy asks if we'll come back to Australia one day. I hope so. Um, I've uh, OC Girl hasn't been with me. It was always trips by myself that I went to Melbourne and Sydney uh, and Adelaide, uh, but I would love to go back. I love to take OC Girl. love to take our traveling princess. Points Traveler says, would you recommend the JR Rail Pass if you're only visiting Osaka and Tokyo? It depends if you're going round trip or not. If you're going round trip, Tokyo to Osaka, then Osaka and back to Tokyo on the bullet train, then yes, I'd recommend it. If you're going one way, like you're flying into Tokyo, taking the bullet train one way and then flying out of Osaka, then no, the JR Pass is not worth it. Yeah, and James says, uh, skip Tokyo in the summer, hot and humid fall or spring. Absolutely. Uh, and Vita says, uh, any plans for Resort World? I hope to make it back to uh, Vegas for Resorts World, um, but I usually go to Vegas in conjunction with some conferences. That's why I go out there. Um, and uh, in particular, uh, NAB, the, what is it, the National Association for Broadcasting or something like that, which is like the big like video conference. They haven't had that one in a while. Um, so uh, I'll be back when the conferences are back that I always go to. Uh, ben asks if I've had the vaccine. Uh, absolutely. Um, we're, uh, we have been uh, vaccinated. And uh, Lab says, I recommend Universal Studios Osaka. It's much better than the one in Hollywood. It's the best Universal Park in the world. All right, Lab, next time we're in Osaka, we'll see if we can uh, winnow out a day to go there. I believe you because I feel like uh, Tokyo Disney is the best Disney theme park in the world. Yes, it's the time you've been waiting for. It's time for the giveaway. All right, fellow explorers, it is time for the giveaway, and if you answer my question correctly, I will send you a Yellow Productions Crew shirt anywhere in the world. Uh, and so my question for you is, in the first time I was on Japanese TV, there were a bunch of people lined up to pet a statue of what? A statue of something. If you're the first person in the chat to put what these people were lined up to rub at this temple, uh, then you'll win a Yellow Productions Crew shirt. And by the way, Gilberto, who is working his way up to winning the most number of uh, Yellow Productions uh, Crew shirts, he's up to five wins. He donated his win last week to Rhonda Walker, um, one of the moderators here on the chats, because Rhonda does it so such a good job uh, moderating and asking great questions. Uh, by the way, as do you, Kathy, and Alex as well. Um, and here we go. Gilberto uh, did not give the right answer. Gilberto said it was Kyushu. And by the way, Gilberto did submit a video for the Yellow Productions uh, Summer Video Photo Travel Contest. I'm going to show that video uh, next week on next week's live stream. So, Gilberto, thank you for that. And we have three correct answers. And now we have a winner, winner chicken dinner. 
But the first correct answer was from the points traveler who guessed bull. That is the right answer. They were waiting for a bull. Uh, Alex also gave the right answer, and Lab gave the right answer. But points traveler, congratulations, you were the first. Points traveler, send me an email. You'll find my email in the description of this video. Uh, and uh, let me know your address and your size, and I will get a Yellow Productions crew shirt right over to you. Well, everybody, thanks for hanging out with me today on this live stream. It was fun sharing my experiences being on Japanese TV. Been on Japanese TV three times, American TV one time. Any TV scouts out there for American TV, you know, hook me up. I got I to gotta beat that Japanese record with American television. Well, it's been a pleasure, everybody. As usual, I won't say goodbye because I'll see you all in the next video.